Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little corner to corner, uh, let's call it a doily, how's that? We're going to call it a doily because I'm using it for my bowl. Ah, it's not exactly in the middle, that's better. <laughs> Get it right Mary. <laughs> so there you go, check it out check it out check it out oh you're getting dizzy I'm getting dizzy <laughs> all right so that's what I'm making my little doily for now I decided to make a doily by accident of course because yours truly as you all know we made a corner to corner blanket recently oh sorry I'm trying to grab it <laughs> my apologies there I'm all over the place oh dear me it's falling everywhere okay there's our corner to corner blanket that we made recently I'm going to pause this. Give me a second. Ta-da! Sorry, guys. I had to pause it there. <laughs> because we made a corner-to-corner -corner blanket recently. And I remember saying I actually made the wrong size. But that was okay because we got a gorgeous blanket out of it. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> this is the, the stitch that doesn't have chains in the middle. And this has chains. So see how wide apart your stitches are and see how nice and close these ones here are now it just depends on what look you're looking for personally I was looking for this look and as I got halfway through the blanket I kind of realized that I did the wrong blanket for you guys <laughs> but it didn't matter because you guys got two pieces out of one in fact you got three because I think we did a rectangle as well just so I can show you a different way of making a corner to corner granny stitch piece so this one here I'm using as a doily as I showed you before. The cotton I'm using is actually leftover cotton from all these blankets that I've been working on recently. And as you can see, I do need to wind them. They're a bit of a disheveled mess. It is the 8-ply Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton. The 8-ply cotton calls for a 4mm hook. We are using the 4mm hook today. You will need your scissors and you will need 4 stitch markers. You may not need the darning needle, we don't actually weave today, we do that um, on the next tutorial. But you'll definitely need stitch markers, just so that I can show you exactly where the corners end up. Alright, so I'm not going to talk too much because it's uh, like the many of my other tutorials, a very long one. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoy making your corner to corner granny stitch doily. Enjoy! Alrighty guys, I'm going to move everything out of the way. You are going to start with whatever colour you like. I am going to start with my blue. And all you need to do is form a quick slip knot, which is yarn over your finger once, yarn over your finger twice, okay, holding everything like so. Pop that back loop halfway over, pop the other loop all the way over, and pop your hook in, give it a tuck. Alright, easy so far, of course. <laughs> That's the easy bit, guys. <laughs> Alright. We are going to chain four. Chaining is you yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once, and twice, and three, and four. Okay. Now we are going to pop our hook in that very first stitch, pulling a loop through like so, giving your work a tug like so, pulling that loop right through to the loop on your hook. Holding on to everything there, you're going to chain one, two, and three okay you're going to be putting your first double crochet in that center there and you're crocheting over that tail end your double crochet is a yarn over your hook pop it in the space yarn over your hook pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over your hook pull through the first two yarn over your hook pull through the last two you're going to do another one yarn over in the space pull up a loop three loops yarn over First two, yarn over, last two, and yet again, another one. And this is your third one that you've done in this space. Okay, so what you've done is chain three, and then three double crochets, and now you're going to put a fourth double crochet. So it's chain three and four double crochets. That will act as one set of three double crochets and a double crochet, and pretending that's a double crochet over, over there as well. All right, now you're going to chain one, two, and three. Turn your work. Now all you're doing is separating your first, your chains from your first stitch, and you are putting 
three double crochets in that space right there. All right, so one and two, just doing it nice and slowly for you, and three. All right, easy, easy, simple. You're going to do the same set that you did here. You're going to pop them through the second last double crochet and your last right in between that space there. So off you go and do one double crochet in that space, two and three. All right, and now we just do one more double crochet in there. All right, so we've got your three double crochets plus your extra one, okay? Chain three. One, two, three. It's very basic. Turn your work, popping three double crochets in between the first and the second. I think you're getting the picture already. And if you've already made our other blanket, then you'll know what's going on now. You're just not chaining anything. You're just continuing with your normal double crochet cluster sets. Now, this row here will have a space in between. No chaining. Just jump into that space with... You guessed it, three double crochets. Super, super easy. This is the best corner to corner and easiest corner to corner that you can make. Now, again, you're jumping in between the second last double crochet and your last with three double crochets. One, two, and three. And always in your last space, you will put another double crochet. Okay, so really, in your first and last space, you actually have four double crochets, not three. In every other space you come to, you'll have three. So turn, no, I'm lying, chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, pop into that space again with your three double crochets. One, two, three. Jump into the first space with three double crochets, two and three. Again, no chaining. Jump into your next space with three double crochets, one, two and three. You'll start to see your corner to corner growing now. Okay, so separate your last stitch and your second last stitch with your three double crochets actually it's the last space so you're actually doing four double crochets in the last space all right so we're going to finish off the last double crochet but don't finish it started with your three loops on your hook pull a loop through the first two hold it there so yours truly is changing to the pomegranate okay so you grab your red pop it on your hook Pull the loop through like so. Okay. Holding on to the both tail ends at the back. And then just chain one, two, three. Turn your work. Now putting in the first space, you know, between those two double crochets, you're putting in your three double crochets. In red, one, two, and three okay three in your next space one two and three no chains just keep going three in your next space one two and three no chains three in your next space one two and three super easy jump into wait before you do <laughs> yours truly in every tutorial i tend to forget to cut that last cut that last blue thread that you did that you got rid of because we're going to do it again we're only using the red in one row in this section here we're going to use it again later but for now you're going to do another cluster set in your red right in that space like we usually do 
one, two, and three. And on your fourth double crochet, you are going to change colors again. Again, if you don't want to, you don't have to, just continue. So yarn over your hook, pop it in the space, pull up your loop, pull through two like normal. Yes, drop your red, grab your blue, pull the loop through, chaining one, two and three, turning your work. And again, you're doing your three double crochets in the first space. One, two, and three. Jump into your next space with your three double crochets, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do next. Two, and three. Pull up the loop. All right, and what we're going to do just quickly is cut that red thread right there give it a cut all right so now i did the wrong one by the way <laughs> cut the wrong end can you believe it right there <laughs> get it right mary you've got one job all right so we cut the red thread and we're still on to the blue now before we go we're going to muck around with some measurements on our little bowl i'm not sure of the bowl my bowl Okay, there you go. All right. So this whole piece from there to there has to come right out here. But what we have to do, because when we're doing corner to corner, um, what happens is when you start decreasing, you kind of lose two rows at the end. So it really shortens up. It gives it a real sharp short. When you're doing the granny stitch, actually it's any corner to corner really so always give yourself those extra two cluster sets more before decreasing I'm hoping that's helping so what I'll do is I'll pop it right out there because I want my piece to be able to be like that so the whole bowl can sit on it and it can be comfortable nothing worse than you've got it and you're sitting like that and that's what you're seeing of of your work you don't want that you want to be able to see that much at least or even even if you want at least that much so we're guessing roughly around there and because it's such a small item, you don't need to measure if you don't want to. Flip it once, yeah, flip it twice. To me, I reckon that is plenty. So really, all you're doing is this amount of rows over and over again, okay? Twice. So what did we do? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two sixes, 12. You need to do 12 more rows, all right? But what I want you to do, I want you to do 10 more rows. That's including this one. So really you're doing, after this row, you're doing nine rows. Join me back here because we're going to change into the red. All right, so do uh, 10 rows and I'll meet you back here after your 10th row. All righty guys, here we are at the end of the 10th row. And obviously it's not big enough, but the reason is because I wanted to add more reds. And remember I said, get to your 10th row and we'll add more reds. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so firstly, what you're going to do, if you're not adding red, just continue on like this, okay? And pop in your last cluster set there. One, two, and three. And your fourth cluster set. Halfway, hold it there, grab your red, pull the loop through like so. Hold those tail ends at the back and chain up your three. One, two, three. Turn your work. Your work's getting a little bit bigger now. Not uncomfortably bigger, just a little bit. And you're doing your normal cluster set in there. One, two, and three. Jumping into your next with your normal cluster set. One, two, and three yet again your next one and we're going to stop two and three all right what we want here is what we want here is this grab your bowl or whatever it is you're using pop it on and what you want is 
you want your work when you're working on it to come out as far as possible that will sit there and you'll have that much because you want your bowl to be able to come out yeah you want your bowl to sit there and you still want people to see the gorgeous little um, doily if you will we're going to call it a, a granny corner to corner granny stitch doily yes that's what we're going to call this piece and so it is our doily and you want people to see that doily okay so you want to give yourself probably another two rows after this one and then meet me back here and we'll discuss what we're going to do next Alrighty guys, so it's nice and grown, it looks great and fabulous. Grab your little bowl or your big bowl or whatever you've got there and add it right there. That's pretty much how it'll be. And now you're, oh it's too much, sorry. <laughs> so now we'll start to close up. When you close up, you kind of lose that corner and it sort of ends up that short, which is perfect really. Alright, so now I'm at the end of that third row. We are going to get ready to start decreasing our ends. Yay! <laughs> Alright. Here we go. We are jumping into our normal um, second last space right there, space right there, or I should say last space, sorry, with your normal cluster set of three plus your one, which is four. Double crochets like that. Okay, now this is your decrease row, okay? Um, if you have not counted your ends, count them now. You should have 18 cluster sets this way and 18 cluster sets this way if you're not changing colors that's fine we're not changing colors yet anyway if you're changing colors go ahead and do that and let's get ready all right all right so now being the decrease row we're still going to be chaining up our three one two three because we need to start our row turn your work like normal just turning like normal okay now instead of jumping into those that space that you have been doing all along you're going to skip it you're going to jump straight into your next space with a cluster set one two and three and before you continue you're just going to grab a stitch marker pop it in that space right there oops it went in there yep that is your first corner well actually that's your second corner because your first one is right down there we don't need to put a stitch marker in there because you can see the tail end right so that's your first corner and then you are going to put your cluster sets in as you go all the way along getting yourself to the end of the row like so so you're doing everything else you're doing normal all right so what I'm going to do is allow you to get yourself to the end of this row, but get to your second last cluster set. So get to around there. Don't finish it. Just get to that second last cluster set and wait for me there. All right. So here we are at the end of our row. And I asked you to make sure you had two cluster sets left. So we're just going to do a normal cluster set in that space, second last space. Actually, we need a normal cluster set in the next space as well. One, two, and three. Okay, now here's where it gets a little different again. All right, so all you're doing here is you're separating like normal. Instead of putting a full cluster set in there, you are putting just one double crochet in there. Super easy, yeah? Chain one two three turn your work like normal okay now don't pop your cluster set in that first space you're going to skip over all these three double crochets and go into your next space with your cluster set one two and three all right just being careful now quickly just grab yourself a stitch marker okay and just pop it in let's pull that loop up for a minute pop it in that space right there just for the minute all right a little bit tricky this end and i'll talk about that towards the end of the tutorial so now what i want you to do is quickly go along your side here doing your cluster sets until you get to 
let me finish off that set right there I don't know why I started it for you <laughs> until you get to that space before your corner bit so get to that space right there and meet me up all right guys here we are at the end of this row um, and yours truly still has that last cluster set to do there before the end of the actual sets two and three okay so before we put our before we finish off this row one two three four five we need to change color as well so what we're going to do in this section here we're going to put one double crochet only we're not going to finish a double crochet because we are changing to our blue so start yarn over your hook start your double crochet in the space pull the loop through hold it there grab your blue and if you're anything like me I didn't cut it before I had to cut it before I went on air <laughs> the second time pop your thread over and pull your loop through okay holding on to both those threads right there okay so all you did there was you did a double crochet in red that's it now you're chaining up your blue one two and three you're turning your work like normal grabbing all those tail ends at the back okay now you're skipping that first space right there so you're jumping over all those double crochets popping your first cluster set in that space there two and three and you do yet again another one in the next space and you pretty much guessed it you're going to do another one in the next and then two you get along now before we go on get yourself to the end of this row right here and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next okay all righty guys here we are at the end of this row well almost all right so i did oh too far away sorry guys i did that last cluster set there and we still have that main double crochet that we um, have to usually pop our cluster set in we're not going to we're just going to pop one double crochet in there and that's pretty much all you need to remember to do so chain one two and three turn your work and I'll show you in a minute what's happening so you can see for yourself you are skipping this space and skipping over all that first set there and jumping into the next space with a cluster set it's super easy now guys you should know how to end off this piece now when you, let me just finish off this section right here all right so I can show you what you're going to do next so when you get to the end of this row you're jumping right into this space right here with a double crochet just one chain up three turn go back the other way get to this space here with one double crochet in there chain three turn and so on and so on and so on until you get to Mm, how many rows do we need to do all right we've done two rows I'm sorry we've done one row of your blue this is your second row how many blues did we have I think we had ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. all right so you need to finish ten rows of the blue when you finish your tenth row meet me back here on the that tenth row we'll change the thread and then we'll tell you what you're going to do next now before you do any of that there's your red thread we still haven't cut it well I haven't anyway <laughs> cut it continue with your 10 rows meet me back here you should have it should look exactly like you see there it should start to close there all right get to the end of your 10th row and I shall meet you up all righty guys here we are at the end of our 10th row all right all right so what you do now is you're just doing your normal double crochet in there don't finish it get halfway through it we're going to change our threads to the red grab your red pull that through grabbing all your tail ends at the back hold them nice and tug and then perform your stitch one two and three I didn't hold that thread very well did I <laughs> I let go of it just the last minute okay now turning your work okay like so and popping missing that space again popping straight into your next space with your three double crochets super easy 
all right and then in the next three double crochets one two and three i hope i'm not going too fast for you guys i get really excited and go extra fast towards the end of a tutorial it's one of those things <laughs> i don't plan it it just automatically happens because i'm getting really super excited so there we go <laughs> two and three because we're going to change threads again at the end of this row but before we do don't forget <laughs> we need to cut that that blue because we need to get it back again don't we so give it a nice tail depends on how long you like your tails i'm not fussed really if i'm saving the yarn for something else i make sure i only leave a certain amount of length but i usually leave a long tail so it's easier to weave in we are on our last cluster set well i am anyway two and three all right and there is our space we're going to start the stitch hold it there grabbing your blue or whatever color you used if i can get the end right <laughs> okay and just pulling your loop through tugging on everything okay grab your tail and your red hold it at the back this time try and hold it mary and just chaining up three one two and three turning your work super easy this part super easy okay just popping a cluster set in that very next space like you would on any other row two and three stop what you're doing right there and cut that red thread because it's actually pulling and annoying me for starters <laughs> <laughs> so cut your thread all right move your red right out the way you won't be needing your your red for the rest of this particular tutorial yay very exciting okay now you're going to pop a cluster set in your next space one two and three get super excited guys because we are almost at the end one in your next one two and three and yet again one in your next marvelous wonderful and sweet and all those wonderful words i can't be bothered thinking about right now <laughs> we're going to jump into that very last space with a double crochet so now we chain one two and three turning your work we've got a few ends to weave in at the end not a lot okay not a lot so one two and three in your next one two and three it's going to start getting a little tricky now okay in your next one two and three i really should be should have it nice and close shouldn't i <laughs> sorry guys Okay, now we're jumping into that very last space with a double crochet, like normal. Just chain one, two, three. Turn your work, and I'll just show you where you are, so you know what we're doing. You need to put one cluster set in there, one in there, and then your double crochet. Because I just wanted to show you what you're doing, because it can get a little tricky, this part. So I'll get nice and close. So you're skipping that first bit. You're popping a cluster set in your next one two and three cluster set in your next one two and three and then you've got your space put a double crochet in that space okay chaining up three one two three turn your work all right now in this section here you really only have one space to pop your cluster set in so pop it in one two and three jumping into that next space right there with a double crochet just one chain one two and three turn your work get excited guys 
There's nowhere to put a cluster set, is there? So all you're doing is slip stitching into that space. Slip stitching is popping your hook in, pulling up a loop, pull the loop across to the stitch on your hook, chain one, pull up a loop, give it a cut, and before you get excited, just grab your little stitch marker and pop it in that corner, just for now. I just wanted to show you something so you know what you're doing. Oh, I get that little thread out of the way. And then do yourself a big favour and pat yourself on the back because you have finished your square. Yay! Well, this clap, <laughs> not the other one. <laughs> it can be too loud, that other one. Um, all right, just grab your little bowl, pop your bowl on. Ta-da! It's gorgeous. Let's turn him around. Oh, he's not centred. How's that? <laughs> Let's turn him around again and turning him around and around and around. Oh, did I cut that loop? I did. All right, perfect. Oh, don't we just love, love, love? We love, love, love. All right, now, you know for a fact that is your corner, that is your corner, and that is your corner. All right, and of course this one here is your corner. I didn't put it in because, uh, stitch marker in, because we already had that little chain space right there. Having said that, let's grab a stitch marker, okay? And pop your stitch marker right in. Oh, let me give you a close up so you can see. Popping your stitch marker right in that space. All right, the, those are the chains, the chain four that we started off with at the beginning. All right, and there you go. All right, now, nothing you need to do today because that's all our tutorial is about today. Join me next week, or maybe Friday, depending on, you know, if I don't get too busy, I might be able to pop it in on Friday. Otherwise, join me on Monday next week we will do a border for our doily. Now, so that you know what, what's happening, for our original blanket, let me show you the difference in the stitch so you understand it. All right, oh, is that the wrong way? That's the wrong way, let me try that way. Okay, pop the two stitches together like, I'll do it with there's less ends. Here we go, we'll do it. No, there's no, there's no less ends. <laughs> it's ends everywhere. All right, so let's pop the two together in fact, pop those little ends under there. So you can see what I mean by the spaces between. Let's get a close up. All right, so see the very large gaps in between on this one? And see the tiny, tiny gaps in there? It's a lot squashed up. That's a lot open, okay? Popping both the sides together, right near each other. See the very big gaps? These are very tiny gaps. And that is what happens with your normal double crochet corner to corner. We're not going to be do doing the same border as this one. No, let me get a nice close up so you can see. Might not be able to see now on the red. <laughs> Nor will we be doing the same border as this one. This border will be totally different, okay? Curve maybe, round, I haven't really decided. All right, so there you go, guys. Ta-da! Oh, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> now, don't worry about weaving in your ends because we're going to crochet over these ends and then I'll show you how to weave them in after, all right? So thank you so much for watching. <laughs> guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And join us this Saturday for our um, live and we'll be discussing the actual border to this piece. All right, how gorgeous has it come out? I know, I love, love, love. And I love the fact that we change colours in between with a little bit of a tinge colour at that end there. It just, you know, highlights the whole thing. And it's perfect size for my bowl. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And all I want to say right now is <laughs> ciao for now. <laughs>